Amen. Hey, man, that's a heck of a win. On the road, right? On the road. Think it off to a great start. Hey, guys going down, guys stepping up, man. Gritty, gritty win. Proud of you guys, man. Give yourself a round of A lot of good in that game. A lot of good in the game. Defense taking the ball away. Special teams, yeah. T. Bass, Sam, Sam Martin punting the heck out of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And then offensively, that last drive, that was elite, man. Elite. We needed yeah, 17. 17. Yeah. 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 Hey, when's the only thing that matters, man? That's it. We got to eight. Let's go get to nine. Win on three, one, two, three. Hey. Damn football team right here, man. I'm so proud of you guys, man. That same process every week. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sean McDermott Show, week number 11, presented by Kaleida Health. Thanks for joining us, Sean. Thanks for spending a couple minutes with us. I appreciate it. Man, what a gritty road win in Indianapolis. Uh, got off to the fast start and then kind of hung in and really took control of that game. Eight and two start, best one of your as your tenure here as head coach of the Buffalo Bills. You know, it's your first win in Indy since 1998. A lot of stuff's going really right for your club this this year. What's one word that describes this team? Right. Well, I don't think I was here in, since 1998, but uh, no. But that's no. that's good to you can take credit for good. the win. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, one thing that's going right for our team is we're playing uh, some gritty, gritty football. Yeah. And yesterday took the ball away and and uh, cashed in when we needed to cash in. Josh was was good. 22, 37, 280. Had two interceptions, didn't throw for a touchdown, but he did run in for one. Yeah. He tied OJ for the you know the second good, most I'd in say. team. Yeah. Twenty one games with rushing TDs, got all this stuff going for him. He's tying Tom Brady for a league record since nineteen fifty. But Josh is having a different kind of season. What, how would you describe it? Boy, oh boy, how do you describe it in one sentence? I would just say he is in command of our offense. Yeah. He's made some amazing plays, yet at the same time he's been patient and kind of chipped away when he's needed to chip away. So his game continues to evolve, and I think you see a different part of Josh's game week to week and then sometimes within one game. He scored 30 plus points, 70 or 10 games this year. It's the most in the league. Uh, you scored 30 plus in each of your last four games. It's the longest active streak in the NFL. It's your longest streak since 2021, uh, weeks two through six. So not not 98. Not 98. Right. This right. one's more recent. This is this is your era, not mine. Yeah, <laughs> you're tied for the league, th tied for third in the league. 29 points a game. I mean, you're really getting it done offensively. What do you think of what Joe Brady has done, particularly in a week like this last one, where you know it's a little all hands on deck. Kind yeah, of get, you know we've had some players out, right? Yeah. So I was really impressed, quite honestly. No one blinked. Joe, all the way through the staff, players, Josh, include everyone. And then players again continue to step up. He puts them in position. The staff does, and they are well prepared. I can right. tell you, going into those games, and the leadership led by Josh and Khalil and Connor and David Edwards, Dion. I mean Dawson Knox. That leadership's important as well. So since the start of last season, you've got four games where your defense has gotten four plus takeaways. It's the most in the NFL in that stretch. Your defense has recorded at least one takeaway in every game this season. You lead the league with a plus 13 turnover differential. Now you've been a coordinator. So what's Bobby doing differently or what's he doing that's causing this, if he is anything, to plus 13? You know, turnover differential. Yeah, you get what you emphasize, right? And yeah. so he's doing a great job along with the defensive staff of emphasizing, taking the ball away, taking the ball away. And that comes when you attack on defense and you play with a relentless style. And, and, I, and I think that's what we did mostly this past weekend. So you got Taron Johnson, who's back and has been back now from his injury early in the season. First Bills DB and the fifth Buffalo Bill all time to have a sack and a pick six in a game. But AJ was the last guy to do it, right? <laughs> it was last year, right? So, you know, Taron said after the game, it was really interesting. He said he saw that play from another team, and he played it a little differently. Then he made an adjustment on, you know, just in his own mind and his own prep. We know he's gritty. We know he, you leave him in there on rundowns. He can tackle and cover, but what can you say about the mental part of his game that allows him to prepare in such a way to make a play like that? 
Well, he's a football player, right? Yeah. So, and he's also a consummate learner where he sees a play on film or he gets beat by a play the next week, you're not gonna get it on him again. Right. And, and this this is a copycat league. Hey, it works one week, someone's gonna use it against you again. So uh, that ability to correct one week to the next is, is high level for us. All right, coach, thanks a lot. We'll get back with you later in the show to get your final thoughts on facing the Chiefs on Sunday. Stay with us. The Game Plan is presented by Energy Mark. Trust Energy Mark for renewable energy supply. When we come back, Eric Wood breaks down the top plays from last Sunday's win over the Colts. Then, Terrell Bernard is mic'd up for the win over Indianapolis. Shopping Wood is presented by St. Bonaventure University, an official education partner of the Buffalo Bills. Welcome back to the Sean McDermott Show, and it's time now for another edition of Chopping Wood with our good buddy, Eric Wood. E, the Bills got their first win in Indianapolis since 1998. What stood out to you about this game? This was a complete team win by the Bills. The defense got it started with a pick six early on and then forced four total turnovers in the game. Josh did a great job in the running game and distributed the ball well without Cooper or Coleman playing in this one. And I love the way Mac Holland stepped up and then later on when Kincaid went out, Dawson Knox got going. Well, let's start with Taron Johnson's pick six. It came on the Bills' first defensive snap of the game, and it really set the tone. What did you see on this one? Well, here, the Bills are going to bring DeMar Hamlin off the right side of the Colts' offense, and so that's going to force Joe Flacco to go to his first read. Taron Johnson said this was a play that he felt like Miami beat them on, so he was ready for. He runs right up the seam with downs and makes Flacco pay. And then he gets the interception, reverses field all the way, some great blocking outside in front of this one. As a former O lineman, I love uh, Rasul Douglas showing off some blocking technique out there on the edge. A little later, Josh found Dawson Knox for a 34-yard gain to set up the Bills' first offensive touchdown. Break this one down. It's a three-by-one set, three receivers up top, and Josh sees that the safety rolls in that direction, and so Josh gets back to the left-hand side. He's done a great job with his eyes all season long, and here he sees Dawson get behind the corner and throws a beautiful over-the-shoulder catch to set up the Bills' first touchdown. Yeah, and the next play, Josh takes it in himself from 13 yards out. What did you see here? This is an interesting concept here. So this is a read zone. And so Pay gets up the field. Josh is now going to keep this one and he's got a puller out in front of him. Spencer Brown gets enough of the defensive end. And then Dawson Knox chips that end first, gets up to the second level. Deion Dawkins also getting up to the second level. And Josh takes it in for the touchdown. And then just before the half, Josh hit Mac Hollins for a 44-yard gain to set up a field goal. Break this one down. There's only 18 seconds left in the half, and the Bills have a third and long. So you just assume that the Bills are not going to score points at the end of the half. But Josh Allen is able to escape to his right. He's so dangerous getting outside the pocket to his right, finds Matt Collins down the field for the long gain. And Sean McDermott said it afterwards in his press conference, really heads up play here by Matt Collins, who slides on the catch, realizes he's untouched, gets up, gets out of bounds to preserve uh, the timeout. And then in the fourth quarter, the Bills put together a 13 play, 84 yard drive to close the game out. A key play in that drive was this screen to Khalil Shakir on third and eight, and it went for 30. What'd you see here? Yeah, it's third and long, and the Colts had been consistently bringing pressure on third and long. And so this is a nice play call, gets the ball out of Josh Hands quickly, and Ryan Vandemark, who is subbing in for Spencer Brown, who left the game with an ankle injury at the time, comes in, he puts Zaire Franklin down on the ground, then keeps his feet and stays up and gets the next guy out there to spring Shakir for the nice gain. This is a heck of a play by Vandemar coming off the bench. Always enjoy your stuff, Eric. Thanks for this. We'll catch up with you after the Chiefs game. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Still to come on the Sean McDermott Show, Terrell Bernard is mic'd up for the win over the Colts. And later on, we take a deep dive into some next-gen stats on Sportsology. Mic'd Up is presented by GEICO. Let's get it! Ah, ah, let's okay. do it, let's do it. Here we go! Hey, smart, fast, and physical. Play one to play none. Hey, smart, fast, and physical. 
Hey, I've been talking about from the play one. We set the f-ing tone. We run the defense, we run the f-ing team. Let's go, dogs on two, one, two. Ooh. Hey, hot mic today. A little hot mic today. A little hot today, yeah, come on. Ha, 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 yes sir. What you on, Oosh? Ah, yeah, all right. Ah. Me and you today. Communication, flying around, making plays, baby. Do what we do. Come on, with me all day. With me all day, with me all day. Hot mic too, just be careful. Hey, first play, flying around, let's go. First play, first play. Start fast, D, let's go. Go back to pass, pocket collapsing, and it's picked off. Taylor Johnson to the 22, working his way back, cuts it all the way across the field. Yeah, team! Yeah, team! Yeah, team! Yeah, team! Yeah, team! Yeah! Yeah! Let's get it. Let's get greedy. Let him block with that on the way back. Come on. That's easy stuff. Taren. <laughs> Pick six on the first snap is crazy. <laughs> Makes the handoff play action pressure coming, and the screen is intercepted. AJ. Hey, Come on, man. Come on, man. What the? I jumped that shit. You seen it? I undercut his ass. Yeah, yeah. Knocked me off. I undercut that shit. Nice as hell. Those are the ones you gotta have, man. Yeah, man, you gotta have those. I jumped it. I like undercut the under route. And he knocked me right when I right when the ball hit my hands. Pressure coming, and Flacco is going to get wrapped up and sacked by Taron Johnson. Boom! Come on! Dallas Cowboys defense, right here. Back to pass, pressure coming, and looking for Pierce, and it's picked off by Taylor Rapp. It was tipped by Alec Pierce. Raptor! Everybody eating, man. Oh yeah, Joshua. First down. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Get down, yep. Taren, pick six, first play. Yeah, that's just crazy. The last <laughs> Give your ass a nugget. Hey, yo. <laughs> Give your ass a, like with my little brother or something. I'm trying to show off. <laughs> Give your ass a <laughs> Give your ass a What do they, what do they call that What do they call it, bro? You know what they call it. <laughs> You know what they call it. What do they call this? <laughs> What's up, baby? Just got the dub at Indy. 8 and 2 feels good. Ready to get back to Buffalo. Next up on the Sean McDermott Show, we break down some next gen stats in sportsology. Plus, hear coach's final thoughts on facing the Chiefs on Sunday. Sportsology is presented by ECMC. ECMC, bringing hope and healing to Western New York. It's been the story of the season. Once again, Buffalo was without starters against Indy, but without fail, players stepped up in key spots to help earn a victory over the Colts. The defense grabbed four takeaways. The offense scored 30 points for the fourth straight week. Here's how the group got it done. Wide receiver Matt Collins had one of his best games in blue and red with a perfect catch rate, catching all four of his targets for 87 yards. Wide receiver Khalil Shakir helped move the ball with six catches for 58 yards. Shakir recorded another 51 yards after the catch to bring his total to 417, which is the second most in the league. On defense, the Bills made life miserable for quarterback Joe Flacco with four takeaways and four sacks. It was the lowest EPA by any Colts QB in a game this season. 
The group also made key adjustments, holding running back Jonathan Taylor to just seven rushing yards in the second half. Taylor had successful rushes on just 19% of his carries, which is a career low. The Bills are now 8-2 on the season, the first time in the Sean McDermott and Josh Allen era, also the first time since 1993. They've recorded a takeaway in every single game this season, the longest active streak in the NFL. Let's see if that streak continues next week. After the break, our crew from Buffalo Bills Weekly gives you their game preview for Sunday's showdown with the Chiefs. Plus, Coach shares what it will take to get the win on Sunday against the defending champs in Orchard Park. This Week 11 matchup features a team who's knocked Buffalo out of the playoffs in three out of the last four years. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. These two teams are neck and neck in the standings this season. The Chiefs lead the AFC with a perfect 9-0 record. The Bills are in second place, sitting at 8-2. This game is about the race to the number one seed. Chris, why is this game so important if the Bills want to be in the driver's seat here? Yeah, well, the first reason is they're two games back in the loss column already due to the fact that the Chiefs are unbeaten. They also have a game in hand the Chiefs do having only played nine to Buffalo's 10. So the Bills have to get this game because secondarily the Chiefs schedule is a lot easier down the stretch than Buffalo's through the rest of November and December. So if the Bills don't get this one, there really is no race to the number one seed. The Chiefs pretty much have it locked up unless they completely implode down the stretch. It's a must win game for Buffalo if they want to be hosting those home playoff games. This matchup features two superstar quarterbacks in Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. What makes them stars this year is different than in seasons past. This year, it's about their ability to string those couple plays together at the end of a game to get a victory. They do it with their legs, they do it through the air, and they also do it with smart decision making. Kansas City has eight comeback wins yeah. this year. The Bills have three. Yeah, the Bills have been scoring more points on a regular basis. They're up to seven games now with 30 points on the scoreboard by the end. That's due in large part to the defense, giving Josh and the offense extra possessions. These two defenses in Buffalo and Kansas City have been carrying these teams this year and helping them earn some big victories. For the Chiefs, they're allowing just 17.9 points per game. They've got a stingy run defense that's allowing just 83 rushing yards per game. They blitz at a top three rate and their defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo does such a good job at confusing opposing offenses. How has this Chiefs defense consistently taken the life out of offenses? Yeah, I think the most impressive thing is their run defense, to your point, has been very low. It's been top five all season long, and yet they've been in close games. It's not like they've run off and left teams mm -hmm. where the other team has to throw the ball the rest of the game. They're still two-dimensional, and yet they still stone them. So they force long down and distance situations and find a way to get off the field. It reminds me a lot, Maddie, of the Buffalo defensive units of old under Leslie Frazier. Not a lot of splash plays. They just play straight up. This is what we are. Let's force long down and distance on third down and get off the field. The Bills defense, meanwhile, has turned into that splash play defense and they're making the big plays to get takeaways, more possessions for their offense. Both teams are doing it, and that's why both are top 10 in points allowed. For more from Brownie and Maddie, including insights from players and coaches, plus exclusive interviews, check your local listings for Buffalo Bills Weekly, also available on Buffalo Bills YouTube. Coach, back home, hosting the Chiefs. I don't know if you know this, they're 9-0. and Have you heard? Okay. Um, <laughs> But they've won nine straight. They've been trailing by at least seven points in every single game this year. It's the longest streak in NFL history. They don't blink when they get into backed into a corner. They beat the Broncos on a blocked field goal with time expired. You kind of know these guys like a division opponent. What's different about them this year that you notice? Well, I think it's two teams that know each other well, as you said, kind of a division opponent, and we have a ton of respect for them. And, you know, the, the poise, as you mentioned, the amount of composure when they came here last year in the playoffs, they go to Baltimore on the road, two of the toughest places to right. play around the NFL. The poise, the composure, and now adding that additional Super Bowl championship, that only builds the poise and composure. So they're used to playing in all types of games, blowouts, coming from behind. So, you know, we've got to be really good right from the start and throughout the end of the game. So Pat Mahomes, he's got nine interceptions this year. It's tied for second most in the league this year. Statistically, it's his worst year of his career, right? He's 9-0. and How have you seen his game and the Chiefs' off offense evolve over the course of Mahomes' career? 
Well, Andy does such a good job of kind of ebbing and flowing and whether it's week to week, year to year, or within one game, adjusting on the run constantly to what the defense has given him and what defenses around the league and how they're defending Mahomes and, and his ability to scramble, his ability to throw the ball down the field and so on and so forth. Thanks coach, good luck this week against the Chiefs. And thanks for you at home joining us on the Sean McDermott Show presented by Collider Health. We'll see you next time and as always, go Bills. Final Thoughts is presented by Toyota. Toyota is the exclusive and official vehicle of the Buffalo Bills. Toyota, let's go places. The Sean McDermott Show is presented by Kaleida Health, the official health care provider of the Buffalo Bills. By Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Call 716-684-COMP today. And by Toyota. Toyota is the exclusive and official vehicle of the Buffalo Bills. Toyota, let's go places.